All right, folks, today I just wanted to do a video showing how um, close Lviv is to Poland. So I'm going to do a quick search here on Google Earth so you guys can get a good feel of um, the distance. There's Lviv. You can see in the south, that's the airport I'm going to be taking off from. And in a second here, I'm going to do a measurement of the distance to the border. Um, just one second here while I do that. So you can see there it's about 36 um, nautical miles. That's what we use in aviation. For those imperialists out there, um, it is, well, well, for you, everyone else in the world, it's uh, 65, um, 0.5, not 0.59 kilometers. And, but again, nautical miles is what we use in aviation. All right, so now that I've got that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the flight here. Uh, just doing a little quick math on um, on how long the flight should take. So at that distance with a Cessna 172, which is what I'll be flying today, by no means is that a fast airplane. Um, it is the standard training aircraft um, that most student pilots start off on. Um, but it typically goes between 90 and 100 knots. So just very rough um, math. It should take about 35 minutes to uh, get there. Fortunately, it doesn't take quite that long. All right, so this is Lviv's airport at uh, the wee morning hours. I always think there's something very special about the way an airport looks at night. We're going to go ahead and change this time, though, to something a little closer to dawn, um, just for uh, visual purposes and uh, keep it VFR. All right, so I'm going to do a quick, couple quick settings here to park and brake off. Um, I had the oak because I have my own flight controls, and I'm going to check to make sure the tower is giving me clearance. I do see that the last communication from tower was that I was cleared for takeoff runway 31, uh, which means we're pretty much set to go. Um, just due to habit of, of things, I'm gonna do a quick engine run up and test my magnetos, just something that I would always do before takeoff. And um, I'm pulling up a VFR map here, which I'm gonna leave in the corner. We'll use this throughout the video as a reference to kind of see where we are in relation to um, where we want to, to get to. All right, so should be time for engine run up here in just a second. There we go. I'm focusing on that tachometer. You're going to see me um, pull it up to uh, full throttle and then back it down to one, um, 1,700 RPMs. From there, I'm going to do a magneto uh, test. First, I'll check the left magneto, watch for a small drop, but within a sufficient limit. Uh, then I'll go back to both, allow it to climb back up and then I'll check the right magneto and then I'll return it to both. Uh, we do that during any type of, uh, in, in, before any takeoff, it's part of the engine run up checklist. And you do that to make sure that you don't have um, fouled magnetos or something that could cause a uh, performance issue on your takeoff since that is the most critical um, phase of, of flight. Not to say that landing isn't critical, it's just landing uh, you have a, a little more wiggle room since airplanes tend to like to fly but takeoff is is uh, something that you want to make sure it's gonna work 100% for you so now I'm doing my takeoff roll um, here I'm just heading right down I'm waiting for my rotation speed which in the Cessna is about 55 knots and uh, I think the game's gonna tell me to lift off yeah you can the actual takeoff roll can be done a little bit after 55 knots the airplane will try to take off on its own and now we're going to do a climb out. Um, I'm going to try to climb out at the best rate of climb for the Cessna, which is about 73 uh, knots. So uh, just to show you a little external view here, you can see the wind has blown me a little bit um, off of the uh, runway. You want to always try to take off maintaining that runway heading, but I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to see Lviv's beautiful airport. So yeah, now I'm at um, my Best rate of climb, which is right around 73. Uh, we'll maintain this as we get up to altitude and um, just kind of hold what we got there. All 
I am in this video and future videos I'm be, I'm going to be mindful of um, the aesthetics to you know you all my viewers so I'll, I'll be working a little bit with doing external views um, and just kind of changing certain settings in order to just give you guys a more aesthetic um, experience when uh, when watch one of my videos I realize for someone who's not a pilot uh, just staring at an instrument panel might not make for the most uh, most fun experience. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator does a absolutely fantastic job with um, the uh, just the mapping of, of the world. Um, it, it combines satellite map with uh, an AI group to uh, to bu do buildings, and um, it's amazing. And then of course there are people who um, will do additional modeling for uh, areas like Sydney or Egypt, uh, and even actually Lviv's airport. Um, someone had made a uh, an accurate model for. So now we're climbing up. Um, I think my, my goal here is to climb up to about 4,000. Um, and at, at this point, we're just max power, you know, full climb. Uh, you'll see me, I'm going to just check my communications with tower. Something I'm personally trying to work on is um, tower communication. So a lot of the uh, auto communication that the game normally provides for people I've disabled uh, because I have to get into the habit of, of actually doing that myself in, in real life so you'll see a, a lot more um, of me interacting with that panel um, just as as I get into those better habits all right so here we got the nav log I'm just gonna go ahead and start it because it's gonna give us a nice timer and um, will allow us to see when we reach the Polish border Cessna November 733 Hotel Hotel Frequency Change. So here this was just a handoff. Um, so the the controlled airspace around Lviv, um, I was in the process of leaving that airspace and so now I'm being handed over to a, a regional um, tower that will perform flight following for me. Um, I believe I squawk 1200 initially, which is the standard code for uh, visual flight rules, general aviation, but the tower will come back and give me a transponder code, and I will then update that transponder code to what they asked me to update. So yeah, here I am, 1200. And I apologize if I use jargon from time to time. Um, feel feel free to you know correct me in the, in the comments um, or ask ask me to elaborate. So squawk is just a term for transmit. Um, we use when when using a transponder, we say it's squawking a code, but all that means is it's just broadcasting that number so that you know anyone uh, can can pick up on that and it identifies. Um, who we are. I actually think from memory, transponders were invented during uh, World War II as a way of identifying friendly aircraft from enemy aircraft. If I'm not mistaken. If I am mistaken, please correct me in the comments. So here I'm just trying to adjust my trim. Um, trim tabs are, are intended to take uh, pressure off of the um, flight controls for the pilot. Uh, however, I have uh, a physical unit that has a trim tab and something's gone a little awry uh, in the settings with the, the two aren't playing nice. So you'll see me uh, adjust it a little bit as I try to find that sweet spot because it, if if a trim tab is putting in you know too much say nose down or nose up then that just makes me have to work a lot harder to counter that with my yoke. All right, and here's a nice external view of Ukraine as we have now departed Lviv and um, we are heading in a generally westerly direction towards the border of Poland. As you can see, I'm not really going due west um, due to some of the other things I was trying to accomplish 
uh, it took my attention off of my heading. So that's a little example of uh, why sometimes having a co-pilot can be handy is to handle things like tower communications, checklists, and some of these things so that the pilot can actually pay attention to the, the piloting of the aircraft. Here I'm opening up the nav log again, just want to take a quick look, see where we are. Um, we're only approximately 11 minutes into the flight from the moment that, uh, that I started. So I guess technically that would not be 11 minutes into the flight. We're just a few minutes into the flight, but 11 minutes into this video. Um, wanted to just take a moment here to look at the VFR map, kind of try to find some landmarks, maybe some potential uh, airports that I could establish contact with, and just trying to see if the boundary between um, Ukraine and Poland is clearly marked on this map. It is, it is not marked to my satisfaction, um, but that's okay. So I did find a couple uh, waypoints, which I'll point out uh, when they show up to let you know where we are in relation to our, our goal. And I do want to apologize for some of the extra radio chatter. Uh, that is something that I enabled uh, for some of my training, which is just AI traffic um, to get me used to being able to filter out my call sign from other people's call signs. It is a little bit distracting uh, in this video, and uh, I, I will turn it off at uh, some point when it finally bothers me enough. And in the future, I will endeavor to uh, make sure it's turned off for videos for you guys. You folks. And here I'm, I'm using these airport codes. I'm also using my cell phone to just kind of look up you know, where these these airports are. Just trying to get a feel for uh, you know a good good target, a you know, good place that I can set as a heading. So some people have given me feedback that um, silence or dead air um, can be, um, you know, la less than ideal. Um, I have to balance that with jump cuts. You know, I, I feel like for giving you all a video that is showing you a flight, um, I want to have as few jump cuts as possible. So, um, you know, this one thing that I'm open to feedback on, if, uh, if dead air is something that is not desired, by all means, let me know, and I can just come up with a little chit chat. In, in the meantime, if uh, dead air is something that um, you know doesn't really bother you because maybe you're just watching this in the background, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm always trying to figure out ways to improve these videos, and any feedback is really appreciated. All right, here I'm with customer flight following. Hotel, hotel is type Cessna Skyhawk, one zero miles north of Uniform Kilo Hotel, Kilo three thousand five hundred feet. And Request power should come back and give me a code to swap on my transmitter in just a few moments. Cessna November seven tree tree hotel hotel off center. Squawk zero seven zero tree. Squawk zero seven zero tree Cessna tree hotel hotel. Cessna Tree Hotel, Hotel Radar, contact 11 miles north of Uniform Kilo Hotel, Kilo 3,400 feet. Why that's so important is tower, the tower's job is to basically maintain um, the safety of all aircraft that are um, you know, in, in the national airspace system. The transponder code will allow them to quickly identify aircraft um, heading direction and altitude 
without all of the extra details of, um, say, the airplane type or the call number, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of stuff with towers to be very clear and concise and to uh, be very efficient with communication. So once I put that, that code in, that becomes who, who I am in their system. And so if I'm flying and there happens to be, you know, some other trap, some other aircraft that's going to be maybe crossing paths with me, they'll be able to identify that, pick up on that, and um, tell me to basically change course, what we call vectoring. Um, they'll tell me to change course or move to a different altitude in order to maintain proper clearance of the other aircraft. It's kind of a beautiful system that we've developed um, in, in terms of aviation um, safety. It can be a little bit cumbersome sometimes uh, to interact with tower and to really have all the the uh, back and forth that goes with communicating with power, but it is absolutely uh, a amazing thing that, that has really enhanced the safety of aviation. I may at some point in later videos go, go into some detail on aviation safety. Um, just from uh, the first time I flew, which was you know back before 2000, to uh, today where I'm going through uh, flight training, there's a number of, of things that have changed and upgraded, um, you know, and have been enhanced. Um, so yeah, I could do a whole video just on on safety. All right, so this landmark here that just showed up, this is in. Ukraine. So this is actually close to the border um, of. It is getting closer to the border of Poland, um, but it is still in uh, the province of Lviv. So uh, Lviv is the, the capital city. The province, uh, what we, people in the United States would call state, um, is also called Lviv. But we are getting closer. You can see my airspeed um, is is pretty pretty high up there, so I'm I'm making really good good speed. The um, you really don't want it to go in the yellow arc um, because that's just a that's kind of the a danger limit for uh, the speed at which the aircraft structure can handle. Uh, it's, it's the caution speed, um, but I'm definitely uh, getting a better airspeed than I would have normally anticipated. Um, really between, say, 80 and 100 knots um, is what I'm used to when I fly with the Cessna 172 at my flight school. All right, so finally my VFR map gave me some airports, which was uh, nice for them to finally update. So uh, that helps out a lot for me to just uh, determine, you know, as I'm heading, maybe which airport I should make contact with and where I should uh, opt for a landing. Um, I don't actually include my landing in this video. Uh, I would have made it twice as long, but um, I did actually find a runway, which ended up being a grass field runway, and, um, and I did have a, uh, uh, a safe uh, landing in Poland, but it literally would have doubled length this video, so I opted to just cut that out. So a couple of things to go over in this little lull here. So the Cessna 172, uh, great training aircraft. By no means is it a high performance aircraft, but uh, an altitude of uh, 4,000 feet uh, with power setting of, of about 75. Um, you'll, you should on average uh, go about 118 knots or, uh, or 136 miles per hour. Um, and I believe that would have a burn rate of 8.4 gallons per hour. The Cessna typically has um, 20 gallons in each tank for a total of 40. Um, 43, I think, is the uh, the full amount, but not all of that is considered usable fuel. You never want to run a um, an aircraft out of uh, gasoline, and then of course there's piping uh, and, and 
you know, think various hoses that get the, the fuel from the tanks, which are located in the wings down into the engine. So there, there is a amount of unusable fuel that we just, just pretend like it doesn't exist. So basically 20 gallons per tank um, for a total of 40. Um, and it has the option of pulling from both tanks, which is the def default option, or you can pull from the left tank or the right tank, or you can shut the fuel off entirely, which is typically only done in, the, in, an, in an emergency such as an engine fire. Um, and most folks would recommend not pulling from one tank exclusively because uh, if you don't pay attention to it or you don't think to toggle over to the other tank, then you can potentially run that out of... Um, out of gas also that will shift your center of gravity so um, that that's important there are a few aircraft out there that don't give you the option to pull from both uh, so the pilots just have to have a checklist where it reminds them to toggle between those two tanks to try to keep things balanced um, I'm glad that I don't fly one of those aircraft And we should be getting pretty close here um, to to our to our goal. You can see this is a beautiful sunrise here, and yes, um, the main city that you see there that's two point um, two point three nautical miles away. I don't want to mispronounce it. I'll, I'll just say Walka. Uh, that is in Poland, so uh, we are basically crossing the border right as we speak and you can see we are 16 minutes into this flight so a Cessna 172 um, relatively mundane uh, performance aircraft can fly from Lviv to Poland in 16 minutes so I uh, hope that you all enjoyed this video um, maybe found it entertaining maybe found it interesting uh, kind of has some to do with some of the uh, current geopolitics, which is why I wanted to do this video. I've actually flown into Lviv um, myself personally, and uh, I love the city. It's a great place that I hope to visit when when peace returns. Um, and I wanted to make this video just to to highlight um, just how close it is to to Poland. 